Here's another uh, experiment uh, dealing with the uh, blocking oscillator uh, in Jewel Thief type of circuits where you take a very low voltage and light up an LED that requires a lot higher voltage using a transformer um, type effect with the um, flyback of the collapsing field of the inductor and this is 10 man circuit and uh, I'll give a link to the forum where it's being discussed um, it's kind of a heated discussion as to what's going on there but you know what uh, there's a lot of people that probably read these things and, and uh, look at them and learn from them so I'm gonna post this this is a replication of Tin Man's uh, circuit it's basically uh, John Bedini's SSG uh, only on a John's circuit, you'd come off here with the uh, 1 in 4007 diode and charge a battery, go back into the top end. This is not an LED in his circuit. This is just a regular uh, 1 in 4001, as I recall, diode to snap the transistor on and off sharply. But uh, this was Tin Man's idea, was to use the LED on the trigger coil circuit rather than have the LED like on a Jewel Thief where it comes down this way or it comes up that way. And then uh, you notice like on a Jewel Thief they um, they don't connect it like this. They connect uh, this around to the other end up here. They they force it into oscillation. And this uh, oscillates um, in a slightly different manner. But when you get down to these low, low voltages like he was showing that is lower than what the transistor can switch at and so the way you do it is you mismatch the windings and that's what he did here he has uh, eight windings on the uh, main coil and then the trigger coil has smaller uh, or more turns on it so that when this goes into oscillation you generate enough voltage to trigger the transistor which is usually about half a volt. Now what I have set up here is basically his circuit um, and this is an electroscope right here that shows you a charge and those are two little uh, aluminum plates that when you put a charge on them they separate and I found out that when this circuit is idle and it's not running because there's no oscillation going on here I can get this to start up with a very small electrostatic jolt and it'll start up. Uh, what I've got here is about 4 volts on a super capacitor. I've got a power supply coming in from a solar panel just uh, near a window here where I, I work. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start this up with this pin this is a plastic pin I'm going to rub it on this right here and it's going to generate a charge a electrostatic charge now watch the electroscope here when I put that on there you see those little plates open up that's enough charge to start this thing here we go there it goes and all I did was use this pin with a slight charge on it to start the oscillator running. The oscillator is now running. You'll see the voltage is now dropping off. I'm actually using more energy than I can suck in with that little solar panel. And it's heading down toward the magic 2 volts. This will run all the way down under, I'm sorry, not 2 volts, 200 millivolts. This will go way down under 200 millivolts. I had it running uh, yesterday at about 170 millivolts, which is kind of what Tin Man said. But anyway, that's pretty darn cool, Tin Man. Uh, I think that's something that uh, most experimenters should um, throw together real quick. It's very simple. I used a uh, MPS A18 transistor, and it worked just fine instead of the 3055. And that's the little transistor right there and uh, I don't have this hooked up to the scope but you can probably see the LED on. Now I'm going to turn it off just by taking off the the base feed wire and there it goes, I just turned it off. Now you'll see the voltage is way on down there about 228 millivolts and it's climbing because I'm gaining energy with the solar panel. I'll put this back on here. 
and you see the thing is off again. Now the pin should be discharged now. Let's see if I've got any more charge on it. There's a little little bit, not much. Let me put some more charge on it. You see those things splay out? Okay, it's got an electrostatic charge on it. And I'm going to start this thing up with the pin. There it goes. And there's the oscillator. And that's just enough of a jolt um, in this uh, base feed circuit to start that up. I'm just adding just a tiny amount of energy here to get this oscillating. And once this starts oscillating, then it's generating enough uh, um, voltage to uh, make the transistor switch. You see, now I'm down uh, under... Uh, 200 millivolts, which normally a jewel thief won't run down there. They, they kick off about um, a little less than half a volt. I've got mine down about 300 millivolts, but they don't ever really go down this low usually and keep on oscillating. And you can see that's still on. Not very bright, but uh, you can uh, increase the brightness, I found out, by putting a capacitor across this uh, resistor. And you can get more brightness out of it by putting a cap right across there. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the little uh, Tin Man uh, blocking oscillator circuit that I thought I would share with people, that that actually thing does actually work under 200 millivolts. Thanks for watching.